Hello guys, and welcome to the first episode in a series where I use a flimsily made pretext to say a video is about history when really I just wanted to do something and record it. Today, we are talking about the NES. More specifically, turning it into a gaming computer. Just so I can claim that this video has some history in it, I'm just going to go over the history of the NES just a little bit and why it was so important. The original conception of the NES, known as the Family Computer or Famicom, was released in Japan in 1983. Now, 1983 was a big year for gaming, uh, but not for the best of reasons. In North America, there was something going on called the Video Game Crash of 1983. In Japan, it was known as the Atari Shock. There's a lot that went into it, but basically what happened was there was an influx of poorly made games that led to consumer confidence to drop, and for prices to drop, and for Atari value to drop, uh, leading to a whole bunch of people just leaving the video game market altogether. One of the most famous games that you might have heard this happen to was E.T. for the Atari 2600. Even today, almost 40 years later, you can still find copies of E.T. for pretty cheap and in pretty large numbers from a lot of gaming stores, just because they made so many of these that they ended up dumping a bunch of them into a pit in New Mexico, and a lot still survived. But in 1985, Nintendo rebranded and remade the Famicom into the Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES. And after the NES was released in October of 1985, it was wildly successful, and is often considered one of the defining reasons why the video game industry was saved in the United States and the rest of North America. To this day, the NES ranks among one of the best-selling consoles in history. As far as home consoles goes, the NES is the third best-selling Nintendo console after the Nintendo Wii and the Nintendo Switch, and actually sold over twice as many units as the Atari 2600. The Atari 2600 sold about 30 million, the NES sold about 62 million. And so that's why you can still find tons of these uh, to this day, both in working and non-working condition, and the one that I bought is not working. I bought it in a lot of two. Uh, it's broken, and so I don't have any issues with you know, breaking it down and um, destroying the insides because it wasn't working anyways. But before I go ahead and take this apart, let's talk about the computer that's going to go inside of it. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff in here that's just miscellaneous, uh, so I'm going to cover mostly just the most important parts. The graphics card is a GTX 1650. It's a low profile version so that it's not as tall and it can actually fit inside the NES case. There's some mesh for uh, fan covers. Here is a rotary tool. Then there is this little uh, extension uh, four PCIe slots. Basically, this will make it so that I don't have to attach the uh, graphics card straight into the motherboard. I can put it wherever else because it wouldn't fit if I tried to just put it in the motherboard. There's a bag of a whole bunch of uh, little baubles and doodads. Here's some JB Weld plastic bonder to keep it from falling apart. Then I got five, count them, five. Uh, 40 millimeter computer fans. I probably won't need all five, but you know, they weren't that expensive and it's better to have extra and not use them than it is to need more fans and have your computer overheat and uh, ruin it. This is the RAM that I use. This is actually from uh, my old rig. It's only a couple years old, but I recently upgraded it from 16 gigabytes of RAM to 32 gigabytes. And so the 16 gigabytes of RAM is what's going into this computer. Here are some covers for the fans. This is the hard drive. It is a disk drive, and I know that solid state drives are faster and uh, smaller, but the thing about hard disk drives is that they're a lot cheaper per gigabyte of storage, and that's what mattered to me. I could get more storage for cheaper. I'm not too worried about loading speeds or anything like that. Uh, this isn't going to be my main computer, this is just kind of a little fun hobby project. Here is 
the low profile cooler that I got for the CPU, which I'm about to reveal wherever the box went. The CPU that is powering this is going to be a Ryzen, Ryzen 5 2600. Uh, not the most powerful, not the best, but uh, it was a pretty good deal that I found online for it. And Ryzen processors are relatively cheap and still very powerful. And so it made sense. The motherboard that this whole thing is going to be attaching to is the B450i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi. Uh, basically, I got this one because it's small enough, uh, it wasn't very expensive, and it has a built-in Wi-Fi attachment because this computer is going to be nowhere near the router, and I don't feel like stringing a long Ethernet cable all the way from the router to the computer. Then finally, there is the power supply. Uh, it's just... It's a Flex ATX power supply, 350 watts. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than I would have wanted, still pretty small, relatively speaking, but as far as how much space we have to work with, uh, still pretty large. But that is the last of the pieces for this computer, but we're not done here. Now we need to look at the inside of the NES real quick. So the NES is very boxy. Uh, it's pretty large. It's not the biggest console. I mean, the Xbox original is quite a bit larger, but this is uh, fairly large. It's fairly square shaped, so there's a lot of free empty space in it. And what I also liked is the fact that there isn't a whole lot of plastic going on inside of it. Uh, it's pretty much just a shell. Uh, there's some things that need to get cut out, like uh, this is gonna need to get cut out, but not a big deal. Honestly, uh, I've already unscrewed all of the pieces, as you can tell, but the inside is very metallic, uh, which I found interesting. Uh, it's just kind of like it, it has its own little shell. If you ever get the chance to take apart an old console, uh, I would recommend it. It's actually really interesting seeing what old parts look like, you know, how sometimes they, they last, sometimes they don't. There were some parts of this that looked surprisingly nice, some parts that looked uh, very, very old and dirty, and, you know, it was just, it was really interesting. The... The couple of things that are being saved in this computer are these two ports right here for the NES controllers. Uh, they're not actually being used for anything. I cut the wires on them already. Just as a reminder, this whole thing wasn't working anyways. I cut them off because they were taking up a fair bit of space and I still wanted a way to keep them in there because aesthetically I thought they looked nice. Um, on the other hand, the power and reset buttons are staying in here. Um, and I'm actually going to use them too. I'm going to have to do a little bit of jerry-rigging with the little blue uh, boxes here so they can actually attach to regular power switches for the computer, but it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, it's just a button. So the first step is going to be to cut out all of these little plastic mounts. Uh, hopefully that goes well. We'll see. I consider myself pretty handy, but I've never done anything like this before, so you know, I'm going to take it easy, make sure I don't screw anything up right off the bat. Uh, if you do something like this, always make sure you wear eye protection, and I would recommend something for your mouth. It's definitely better than nothing, I just don't want to be breathing in dust and everything. And this will do perfectly fine when it comes to not breathing in dust. And I'm so lucky that I don't have to wear glasses, because wearing these safety glasses with this mask, uh, it's instantly fogging up. For anyone that has to wear a mask and glasses, I feel for you. But, you know, we all have our duty to uh, stop the spread of the disease. And so, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. That was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Uh, had some issues with the rotary tool. Couldn't get the uh, the key to open up and put a new blade on after the one I was using broke. So I ended up using the pliers, which actually worked out a lot better than I thought they would. Uh, I'll have to figure something out for when it actually comes like cutting out holes for the back of the motherboard and everything, but uh, I'll get there when I get there. But as far as cutting things off, um, 
that's pretty much it. You know, before I, I don't need, necessarily need to grind down everything in here. So next is going to be figuring out where everything's going to go. So the motherboard, CPU, and the RAM are all actually already together um, because I had to test the computer parts first to make sure they work. And so it's going to make assembly actually a little bit easier, I think, just because I don't have to worry about I don't have to worry about um, trying to put the CPU and everything on while it's in the NES case. Okay, so. Uh, it's been a little while. Uh, went out, had to buy some things, uh, took a little break, got some coffee, spilled the coffee on my shirt, changed shirts when I got back. But uh, I'm here to finish this up. Uh, one thing I got was I got a little tool to help me cut the plastic a little better. Um, but one thing I realized, there were two uh, miscalculations on my part. One was with the hard drive. Uh, I thought that the hard drive would fit in the case. This is what the case looks like right now. Um, cut everything off that I needed to cut off, sanded down some of the parts. Uh, it doesn't look great on the inside, but you know, you're not gonna look from the bottom or anything, so it's not that big of a deal. But there were two main miscalculations that I made. One was with the hard drive. Uh, I thought it was gonna fit in here. It isn't, so I went out and I bought a solid state drive just to go in there. And the other thing was the power supply. The power supply is not going to fit in here as I have it. Um, but honestly, it kind of works out anyways, because the power supply, I'd be worried about it getting too warm. And I don't imagine that the power supply would get hot enough, but just in case, it'd probably be better to have it outside anyways. And it's a pretty self-contained power supply, so it should be fine outside the computer case and it's not ideal but it's pretty much the only solution. The only other option would be to buy a Pico PSU and a power pack but that wouldn't really create enough power for all of the gear I have on there, not safely at least, and I would have to wait like two weeks, three weeks, and I would have to spend another couple hundred dollars on everything, which I just don't want to do. Now we got a little bit more to do. Still got to cut out the outside of here to make room for the I.O. for the motherboard and for the uh, graphics card. And then we got to start mounting stuff, but we're getting pretty close now. probably going to do is I'm probably going to JB weld the uh, standoffs that the motherboard is sitting on onto the case. Uh, it's not ideal but just to make sure that I get it all nice and square on there I should probably do that. This says that it sets in 15 minutes. Uh, it's gonna be a while longer until it's actually hardened. But, I mean, that's not too long from now. I'm wearing a hat so much all day that I just feel weird without it. Okay. Let's do this again, hopefully for the last time.
Cool. Okay. Last thing I think is the backplate for the motherboard. Then that should be it. There you have it. You have classic NES, uh, you know, full aesthetics, uh, as long as you're not looking at the back. Uh, full aesthetics on the front and everything. You know, you wouldn't be able to tell that this isn't just an NES, but turn it on, bam, it's a gaming BC. This was a lot more work than I expected. Uh, it turned out all right, hopefully. Still haven't tried it yet. Uh, it turns on, which is a good sign. Um, something could still go wrong with it though. So, it was probably going to be a day, a couple of days, maybe a week, I don't know, of me loading Windows on it to test it and everything will probably be like a couple seconds to you guys. So thank you for watching me build it and take it away future me. So I uh, just finished putting it all together and tested it all out and it works. Uh, not just turns on, but it actually like works, works. I haven't installed Windows or anything else yet, so I can't actually, you know, try it. And it'll be a little bit before I get around to that, but hey, it works. So can't ask for much more than that. Yeah, so it's uh, it's been a little bit since I last worked on this. It's been probably two weeks or so since I was last actually working on the NES computer. It took me probably 13 hours in total to build the computer and clean up afterwards. I was working from 11 in the morning until 2 the next morning, and so it took quite a bit longer than I expected it to. But it did turn out really well. There is an issue with it overheating, some just because of the graphics card pushing up against the wall of the NES. but. Really, it's not that big of a deal. It's not meant to be used for very long periods of time. It's sort of just a casual console for not too demanding games. And as you can see here, games like Human Fall Flat, they work out pretty well. I learned a lot with trying to get all of those computer parts you know, shoved into a very tight space like an old console. Next time, I probably will just go with a Pico PSU instead of a full regular sized power supply just because it made everything a lot harder and it ended up having to be outside the console anyways because it just didn't fit. The wires were a lot thicker than I had anticipated them to be, but you know, that's just how it goes sometimes. Uh, this was my first little project like this, so the fact that it works is a success in my book. If you did manage to make it this far along for the ride, I really do appreciate it. Thank you for all of your support. This has been Historical Hindsight, and I'll be seeing you soon.